Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in the Word. I'm Robin. I'm Bethany. And we are without our birthday hats this week. Um, hopefully you caught that last week. But we are here in Hebrews chapter 8 this week. Um, and it is talking about the new covenant. Um, Jesus coming as the new covenant. The in with the new, out with the old. Yep. So you have an interesting question, Bethany. When I was first looking at this, it says, what is Jesus doing in heaven according to this chapter? And I'm curious what, where you're wanting people's minds to go with that. Yeah, I think it's just so interesting because if I picture Jesus in heaven, I picture him kind of like running, you know, like watching and observing and move, you know, like, you know, like that's like, mm -hmm. but it's like in this chapter, it's like he's a priest like praying for us. Mm -hmm. And I guess I didn't like, it just was this different picture of like, if I want to see Jesus rightly, like what is he, like what does it say in his word that he is actually doing? And it's like, he is... Like he made the sacrifice once and for all for us to be able to enter in before the Father. Um, but it's like the fact of what he is currently doing is he is also like acting as a priest, still making per, like supplication is a word for it, but mm -hmm. it's like praying for us, like saying these people, because that's what the priest did in the Old Testament mm -hmm. is they made a sacrifice and they would come with all the sins of the people and they'd be bringing them for them, and then they'd offer prayers up for the people before mm -hmm. God. Like, people didn't go themselves. And it's like, now we, it says in this chapter of how, like, God himself, like, writes his laws on us, mm -hmm. our hearts, and we can know him ourselves. There's no longer this need for somebody to go before the Lord to find out what God is saying and to come back to us and tell us and teach us those things. But Jesus still acts as a priest mm -hmm. in the in heaven all time, for all time. He is staying before the Father, praying for us and offering up those prayers, even though the sacrifice has already been made once and for all. But I think it was just this neat picture of Jesus talking to the Father about me and mm -hmm. saying, I'm gonna ask you, Father, to be doing this for her and mm -hmm. be helping her and that she would see this. And I don't know, it's just a neat idea of Jesus himself praying for us. It's really interesting to like, live in the time after Jesus was on earth. And I think like, what would it be like to need an earthly mediator yeah. to have to go to somebody and confess that mm. and then put your trust in that priest to go and do all the right things and, you know, yeah. in the right order to make atonement for that. And I'm just really glad, like, and that's, that's what I put, you know, there's the question, what then is true of myself? If you're using your devotional guide to kind of walk you through this, I just wrote, I don't need an earthly mortal mediator. Yeah. Because Jesus is right there sitting at the right hand of the Father um, and just interceding like that for us. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, I think about that too. And I think even in reading this, you know, it's like, they shall not teach each one his neighbor and each one his brother saying, know the Lord, for they will all know me. And I think mm -hmm. about that because I think we do, do, like we still do that. Obviously, it's like we're teachers of each other and knowing his word. But it's that fact that every single person is able to go to God himself and to know him. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, it wasn't like that. It's like you think about Moses who went up onto the mountain to know God and God had all these things of being like, okay, the people shouldn't get this close. They shouldn't touch, you know, they can't touch this because of the issue of holiness and the separation mm -hmm. that was there because of sin. And to just be like, that is done away with. And it's like, he still wants holiness of us because he is still God. But it's like he invites us now that we ourselves would come to him mm -hmm. to know him. And I think how many, like, do I do that? Do I go to him when I have questions? Or do I like go to other people and be like, hey, like, what do you, like, and not that it's bad, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's like we're meant to do this in community and relationship, but like that we have an opportunity that hasn't always been there. Mm -hmm. It's like before the cross, people didn't have that opportunity. They had to rely, like you said, on the priests, on these people to get the word of the Lord or the prophets. Like, what is the Lord saying? Let's wait to hear from the prophet. And to just be like that, what a beautiful thing like we have. And do we take advantage of it? Do we ask the Lord himself about things that it's like, well, I don't know how that's going to work out. Do we ask him? Mm -hmm. You know? And it's not, I was thinking when you said, you know, community, that's all still good. It's yeah. not a past to be silent on your sin. Yeah. Just because you know that Jesus has taken it, we have that access. Um, you're still needing to be meeting with others and you know, confessing sins yeah. and struggles and inviting believers into that with you. 
Um, but yeah, it's it's just really beautiful to know that that forgiveness doesn't hinge on yeah. a set set of rules yeah. that need to be followed to a T. Right. You know, when you're just kind of left out of control in that. Yeah. I was thinking about, too, how, like, the temple was set up and they had this thick curtain between the Holy of Holies and then the place where other people were allowed to be. Like, mm-hmm. nobody could see this because the presence of God was there. And it, in this chapter, it talks about how these things were shadows. They're symbols of what, like, the real things are so that we could kind of get a picture of it. Um, and how that veil, that curtain was torn at the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, it says it ripped in half. And just how powerful that is. Like you just like, it's one of those things that we say to meditate on a thought or meditate on Mm -hmm. the word, but like that God himself, like no one ripped it. It's like God ripped it. It's like, he couldn't wait for people to just know him face to face and to be in his presence. And I think so many times we're like, God, like come with your presence. But it's like, he ripped the thing. He's Mm -hmm. waiting for us to just come to him, to look at him, to see him. He's not hiding his presence from us. Mm -hmm. Like he, he ripped that curtain and ripped that so that we would be able to, to go in through the blood of Jesus. So. And his presence isn't any less intense just because now yeah. it's available to everybody. Yeah. You know, I think about what was it like for that high priest to go into that holy of holies. Mm-hmm. And I just always think of the movie, The Ten Commandments, you know, where Moses comes down from the mountain and his eyebrows are everywhere. And just, you can tell yeah. they had to show somehow that he's been in the presence of God. Yeah. I think to just be able to just come into the presence of the Lord like that, and it is so intense and so holy and so beautiful. It's just, it's right there at our fingertips. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, too, the, the end of this chapter, this was kind of my own personal at the end, like what verse from the chapter are you going to memorize and meditate on? Um, for me, it was the last two, but as I was reading uh, verse 13, it's the last verse. It says, in speaking of a new covenant, he makes the first one obsolete. And what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. And I know that's talking about the old covenant and all of that. But I just thought, what a sweet, like, mirror image of just us when we come to Jesus and that the old is yeah. just, it's obsolete. It is vanishing away. And just how many people feel stuck sometimes in a struggle or a sin and just feel like they don't have that power. It was just a good reminder to me to go, no, that old one, that old life is obsolete, just like that old covenant is obsolete because he came. um, I think it uses the word better, you know, the better covenant. He came and it's just such a solid promise to be able to sit in. Yeah, that's really good. Hmm. That's all I've got. Yeah. Okay. So we will be back next week. We'll be in Hebrews chapter nine. And um, again, if you didn't get to watch the video last week, it still kind of pertains. It was talking about Melchizedek and it just talks about what was that priestly role. So if you didn't mm-hmm. get to watch that, it still like is really good for chapter eight and nine as it's talking about these pictures mm-hmm. of what he was. But I just encourage you to go back to week seven and find that link. Um, otherwise, we'll be back with chapter nine next week.